everybody, I'm Tom Vassell. Welcome to Week in Review. This is a show we do here in the Dice Tower. We tell you about all the reviews we did over the past week and other videos, and we tell you what we think about them. And then if you want to see the whole review, hey, happily, there are links in the description below. Let's get started. Hey everybody, I'm Z Garcia. Here's what I did last week. So I reviewed Couture, which I gave a 7.5 out of 10 to. This is a bidding game, an auctioning game. Uh, sort of simultaneous selection, also in a way. And it has a really cool theme. Gorgeous illustrations, this idea of you going to different cities and putting on uh, um, fashion shows, runway shows, having more influence. The cards you are bidding on are both scoring, but also change your ability to bid in the future, in upcoming uh, events. So I really enjoy that. Do you invest in that long-term ability to overpower your opponents with, with large amounts? Do you get victory points instead? Do you sometimes weaken your ability to uh, bid in the different cities for exchange for, you know, it, lots of points? So you can do that too. So I really enjoy it. It's very well thought out and well put together, and it's got such a unique theme that uh, that is uh, very charming in and of itself. I reviewed Imperial Miners, which I also gave a 7.5 to. This one is uh, it's set in the same sort of world as Imperial Settlers, has the same illustration style and the same ideas. But the gameplay is completely different. It's a very fast game, very straightforward. You're building this little mine that your characters are, are mining into. And then the cool gimmick here, the, the neat uh, ability, is that every time you put a card into play, you'll activate that card, and then you mine your way to the surface. And any other little connected card that you go through, you activate that as well. So anything you put in play early on, just below the surface, so to speak, you could re-trigger that multiple times. Obviously, the deeper cards are the better ones. They have, you know, the wilder powers. But I really enjoy this one. It's very quick playing. Um, it's largely solitaire, though it didn't bother me too much in this game. You can kind of just put your head down and do your own thing, and then when everyone's done, you come back to the center for an event. Flip over a card, and it does something great. We all got it? Do your own thing again. Uh, it's charming. It's very... Uh, funny. It's got a lot of tongue-in-cheek illustrations and names of cards, so I really do like it. It's nothing like Imperial Settlers, but it's a nice sort of, I don't know, junior version of that in a way. Uh, Imperial Miners is a, a cute one and a great introductory style game. I reviewed Marvel Dagger, and this one I gave an 8 out of 10 to. Fantastic cooperative game uh, with the Marvel theme, of course, on top of it, but the things that they held it back a little bit where the, the game is a little long and it's very lucky in some ways. The things that gave it that 8, in my opinion, very cool theme, works well, lots of cooperation in the game, and quick turns, very fast turns. You take one small action, do something on the map, and it's the next player's go. So you're going around the table very quickly. I really do enjoy the way it comes together, the conversations the players are having, the heroes included in the box, the villains that are there are very interesting. So. This is a winner from Fantasy Flag Games, while, yes, yeah, still falling prey to some of their, uh, you know, usual um, ideas or, or, you know, uh, this, this, the game's too long, there's a lot of luck, uh, not enough dice for everybody, that sort of thing. All right, moving on. We've got uh, Moon River, which I gave an 8.5 to. This is the latest in the King Domino line of games. Uh, I like the twists here, this idea of drafting the tiles like you did in King Domino, Queen Domino, all these games. But now you're drafting only half of a tile, and when, whenever you want to, really, you take two halves, put them together, and then you deploy that to your, your landscape. It's got a western theme now, which I think works pretty well in this one. It's got some teeth, it can, can be a little mean, uh, but you are gathering cows, they become kind of your multipliers in your lands. You have ranchers that do different abilities. And the whole thing manages to elevate some of the strategy in, in the game from, say, King Domino. But it, the rules don't suddenly have a lot of overhead. The game is easy to play and easy to understand. So I do enjoy it. I like the Western thing more than the medieval thing. Uh, and this is, in my book, a, a winner. One that um, I could definitely see myself bringing this out with lots of different people. It's quick, it's fun, and if they like the setting, that's a no-brainer. And then lastly, I reviewed Disney Lorcana, which I also gave an 8.5 to. Uh, this is a brand new trading card game. Uh, it's really in its infancy right now, but I think what the game is doing uh, is interesting. It's um, 
It's got a lot of the usual tropes that a lot of trading card games do, both the good and the bad. So if you already are, uh, you know, have an adverse reaction to trading card games, you know you're not going to like that. I think the system here is simple but interesting. Not brain dead, but not uh, going to keep a lot of people out because of the overhead and the rules. The artwork is honestly stellar. All the pieces of artwork are original in this game. If you are a Disney fan, that alone, I think, is going to get a lot of people to check this game out. And I would encourage it, honestly. If you are a big Disney fan, the game looks stunning. But the gameplay is also very interesting. You know, playing out of starter decks is, is neat. Building your own deck, you start to see that depth and start to see the places where they could go in whatever the second chapter is and so on. So I, I did enjoy it. I thought it was a great opening to a new trading card game. That's Lorcana. 8.5, and that's it for me, folks. I'll see you on the next one. Week in review. Roy here. This week I took a look at three different games. I took a look at Spy Family. This is a love letter style game based off the anime with the same name. Um, basically this is a hunt for peanuts or whatever, but you're basically trying to deduce where the spy is and play different cards and maybe throw an assassin card in somebody else's hand and knock them out or be able to get the whole Forger family to win the game. A super light filler style game I gave it a 7.5 I thought it was pretty enjoyable especially for anime style games and then also I took a look at Lorcana with Tom and Z so Lorcana is a big like super hyped up collectible card game and I did find the game enjoyable I do feel like it has that magic and hearthstone vibe but there's some interesting decisions I felt like it was pretty meaningful but I didn't feel like it was going to work for like my fiance and family as much as I thought it actually would. It was a 7.5, mostly because I enjoyed it, but I don't think I'm going to go back to it. So it didn't reach the uh, echelon of higher scores for me. And then also I took a look at Marvel Dagger. This is a fantasy flight game that reminds me a little bit of Eldridge and a little bit of of Marvel Champions, and I love both those games. This got an 8.5 for me. I love the cooperation in this game. It is a little bit long, but I definitely enjoyed this game a ton. I love all of the Marvel stuff and the way you can smash up the aspects with the heroes and have a lot of replayability there. Anyway, that's what I took a look at this week. Hey everybody, I'm Joey Evans, and here's what I reviewed this week. First off, I start off with a game about a circus, an entertainer-style game called Three Ring Circus. I enjoyed it. I think it fell flat on theme a little bit, but it was still enjoyable. So check out that review. I gave that a 7. Also, I looked at Boop, which is the Halloween version of Boop, a game that I have not played about bumping cats and stuff off the bed, kittens and cats and all that. Really fun. Um, I really did enjoy Boop. It just adds a couple of ghost cats. If you do have Boop, I don't know if it's needed or not, but I don't, and I did like it. I enjoyed the game, and I gave that an 8. So those are the two games I reviewed this week. Hey, it's Chris time. I reviewed four games this week, the first of which was Imperial Miners. I give this a 7. This is a fun, very quick, simultaneous card game. It is a little bit of a find-the-broken combo kind of thing. Exploit the little uh, cards that you come across. Fun little game, really enjoy it. Uh, fun to see another game in this Imperial world of, of portals. Next up, Three Ring Circus, a 7.5. This is from uh, Fabio Lopiano, designer I really enjoy. Beautiful theme, very fun, and a great production. The theme doesn't quite come through, but what does come through is a very solid, mechanically sound little game. You're the play cards, or you're traveling around this map performing. I do like both of those parts, so a 7.5 for me. Next up, Marvel Dagger. This is also a 7.5. This is a nice kind of return to form for me for fantasy flight games and this kind of big adventure series. Something that I'm excited to play. I think it's, it comes with a lot in the box. It has some swinginess, which is why it's not higher, but a game that I definitely enjoy playing. Lots of cooperation, a 7.5. And then lastly, Couture. This is from All Play. This is a 9 from me. A wonderful simultaneous bidding game. If you enjoy Nidavellir, imagine that this is like Nidavellir, the card game. As you're bidding for three different regions, you arrange cards and it's set. You reveal it and you win cards in the three different regions. All at once, so fast, so good. So a nine from me. Wonderful game. And that's been my week. All right, this was a really strong week for me as far as ratings go. Uh, my lowest one here, Moon River, I was a 7.5, which is a still a seal of approval. So starting off strong with Moon River. I think if you like these kind of games, 
you're going to like it. What it's mainly bringing to the table is this idea that each tile you place, you're putting two halves together to build out your own tableau. I think that just adds enough, another little layer of thinkiness without being super restricting where you have to plan ahead. It's a great combination for me. I did enjoy it. Not typically my style of game, but this would probably be my go-to within this kind of tableau building, uh, carcassonne um, kind of genre. So, Moon River 7.5. I also took a look at Marvel Dagger, came in at an eight for this one. Wow, it reminds me of so many games that I like but still stands strongly on its own. You get this Marvel Champions vibe as you're taking your character and giving them an aspect, which gives them different personalities and action selection abilities. I like that a lot. It gives me Eldritch Horror vibes with the, um, it's not the Mythos deck in here, but it's an event deck or a objective deck that you have to work through before you kind of have this final battle. But all in all, it stands on its own. I love the turn structure of this where each round you get or yeah, each round you get three actions, but I take one, you take one, 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 or two, 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 then three, three, three. I love that it kind of forces a cooperation because you're not taking your whole turn, then someone else taking their turn. So even if you don't do things max efficiency, with max efficiency the first time, you have that little bit of flexibility because you still have more turns each round. I really, really like it. I did think it went a little bit long, but overall absolutely happy to get Marvel Dagger to the table at an eight. Also took a look at Imperial Miners, came in at an eight as well on this, so still with a seal of approval here. Imperial Miners is kind of the engine tableau builder in the Imperial Settlers universe that I didn't think I needed. I really love this universe. I think as you're digging down and setting up this tableau, it kind of gave me Gizmos vibes, where when you place a card, you're going to take that action. And then in this one, rather than triggering everything you've built up, you're triggering your way back up to the surface. And so you're kind of building these ideal paths for yourself. I really did enjoy it. I felt like some of the cards were a little too limiting. Like if you're going for gears, maybe you're not lucking into the gear um, kind of engine that you're needing. So a little bit limiting with that, but overall, I love these engine builders. I love these tableau builders. And it is just a lot of endorphin feedback when you're triggering three or four things per turn. I really enjoyed Imperial Miners with an eight. Top of the list this week for me though is gonna be the Old Trey expansion, Tales of Old Trey, Undead and Alive. This is a near perfect expansion for me. I came in at a nine. That's gonna be a seal of excellence. I love everything it did. It gave you a lot more content that you're already familiar with. It gave you these extra chronicles that you can play through. It gave you the additional setup cards that you can use. But then it also gave you a little bitty new thing. It gave you these Langer cards, which are pretty much just status cards that, that your character can get. And maybe it's not that bad, you play the whole round out with it. Maybe it's terrible and you take that extra action or that extra turn or ways to turn, if you will, to heal just to get rid of that status because it's really holding you back. I love that flexibility. I love the supernatural theme here, the way it brings more life to the base game. I, it doesn't feel like attack on expansion. It feels like a very well integrated expansion that you can just jump right into. So for me, if I'm recommending Ultra to somebody, I'm gonna say, go ahead and pick up this expansion as well. If you have Ultra, I'm saying go ahead and pick up this expansion because it's bringing a great supernatural life to it. So Ultra, Undead and Alive, I gave a nine. That's gonna be it. Like I said, great week for me, but let's keep going. Okay, so for me, Couture, this is a fashion themed game from All Play, and I really like this one. I gave it a, an 8.5, this little game in which you're just playing cards. It's almost like a hand building game and collecting cards, and it just plays so smoothly. And um, the only, my only caveat is I wouldn't play it with more than four. Uh, we also took a look at Lorcana. That's the big review of this collectible card game. Uh, I enjoyed it a lot, actually. I think it's fun. Um, uh, uh, Couture I gave an 8.52, but Lorcana I gave an 8 to. This one's just a solid collectible card game. I'd like to see where it goes in the future, but the Disney theme is very strong, and I enjoyed that. Three Ring Circus, I gave a 6 to. Uh, I wish the theme was stronger, and the game leaves me a little cold. This area majority uh, circus theme game from Devere, but there are some good aspects to it, and I think a lot of people are going to enjoy it. Uh, we took a look at 
Well, I didn't review any of those games, but I did do a seven quick reviews game. I took a look at a lot of different little games. And by the way, if you'd like to see all of our quick reviews, they're not here in the main channel. We put them all in one video, but then we separate them out so you can see them separately on Dice Tower Encore. You want a review or two every day? Check out Dice Tower Encore and you'll get something there. And then with my kids, we took a look at Ayla and Something Shiny. Gave this one an eight. It's a big story-driven game that looks like a little kid's game. It is 100% not. It's a little bit of a campaign. You play through it once. You can go back and replay through it, but it's going to kind of play out similarly. But it's super interesting, and you'll have to watch a review to see how that one works. We also had all of our different live shows this week. I also did a Kickstarter look back where I took a look at Kickstarters that I backed in the past and what I'm talking about them now. There's Q&As, crowd surfing, and more. So all of that has been on the Dice Tower this past week. And here comes another week of content. We'll see you soon. Until then, I'm Tom Vassell, and you've been watching Week in Review on the Dice Tower.